tēnā rā koutou katoa, e mihi ana ki ngā mana, ki ngā reo, ki ngā āhuatanga katoa, e pāngi ana ki a tātou, o tira ki ngā āhuatanga e whakahiri ana i a tātou. Welcome to our ICA Health Communication Presentation, titled Culturally Centering Indigenous Voice, from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Introducing our presenters, first Dr Phoebe Allers, who is a postdoctoral research fellow at CARE, Centre for Cultural Centred Approach to Research and Evaluation in the School of Communication, Journalism and Marketing at Massey University, New Zealand. She received her PhD from the School of Communication Studies at Auckland University of Technology in 2018. Her primary research interests include health communication, information and communication technologies in healthcare and critical and cultural studies. Pooja Jayan is a junior researcher and PhD student at CARE at Massey University. In her research projects in New Zealand and India, she engaged with migrants, refugees, underprivileged children and women and minority communities experiencing marginalisation. I am Ngaho or Christine Allers from the Tribal Nations of Ngāti Kaupata, Ngāti Kahungungu ki Wairarapa, Ngāti Maniapoto and Ngāti Haua in Aotearoa. I am also a junior researcher and PhD student at CARE. I am engaged in the CCA analysing Māori meanings of health and wellbeing and co-creating infrastructures for voice with whānau participants. We will provide a brief overview of the CCA and Kaupapa Māori theory, followed by a snippet of the CCA community grounded campaigns in Glen Innes, Auckland, Fielding Manawatū and Highbury, Palmerston North, anchoring voices from the margins of the margins of communities amidst hegemonic health discourse. We'll now go to Pooja. CC or the culture centered approach deals with subaltern classes whose voices are often erased from the dominant discursive spaces. So CC seeks to create dynamic platforms where the people from the margins can raise their voices and create solutions in locally meaningful ways. So CC looks at three elements to analyze how meanings are created, that is culture, structure, and agency. Culture is the everyday creation of meanings and structure is the allocation of resources which limits access to some people, whereas it privileges some sections. And agency is the ability of human beings to negotiate these structures. In CCA, voices of the communities are at the center. And now we can listen to the voices of communities at the margins in New Zealand. Kaupapa Māori theory uh, was first articulated by distinguished professor Graham Hingangaro-Smith against the backdrop of a contemporary Kaupapa Māori resistance movement underpinned by Māori epistemologies, knowledge, practices, both traditional and contemporary. Uh, this is not an exhaustive account of Kaupapa Māori theory, scholarship and campaign. So below there are a couple of references for more in-depth information. Kaupapa Māori theory posits Māori language, knowledge and culture as integral elements that validate and circulate Indigenous narratives into research across all domains, including health, and in so doing, interrogate hegemonic research practices by opening up possibilities for social transformation. The purpose for acknowledging Kaupapa Māori theory in our paper is to pay homage to the Kaupapa Māori resistance movement that has paved the way before us and to probe further to identify spaces where the CCA and Kaupapa Māori theory intersect, identifying avenues for solidarity with academics and voices from the margins of the margins of communities. We'll now go on to uh, Dr. Phoebe Ellis's pro presentation. Hi, well, I'm presenting on an ongoing project in Glen Innes, which is a low-income suburb in Auckland, 
The initial engagement in October 2018 with the Gleninist community involved ethnographic research, including interviews with 60 residents. And within the Gleninist township, there were clear social issues visible, including homelessness, unemployment, crime, substance abuse, and mental illness. But resident stories also revealed a positive side to Gleninist, including a strong sense of community where people care and support each other. It is this community that has been central to the ongoing development of the project in Glen Innes. In May 2019, a group of residents formed an advisory board. And from that first meeting, it was clear that there was a need for alternative routes of communication that enable voice and listening. Over the next six months, we developed the Poverty is Not Our Future campaign which aims to draw attention to issues relating to poverty. I'll go on to the next slide now. So in the study, I outlined instances of reflexivity as a methodological tool during this process. So for example, when we originally planned um, the first phase of the research, we planned to interview people who resided within this one Gleninus boundary, which is set by the Auckland Council. But as we talked to people and we conducted interviews, we discovered that our geographical boundaries were merely outlined on a, on a map, nothing more. With many people from neighbouring suburbs identifying and seeing themselves as living in Glen Innes, and yet we were reluctant to define the community in this way. And that made us look at ourselves and question why, why is that? Um, in planning the campaign, um, we found that for the advisory board to be effective, we had to trust in the decision-making of the members. So, for example, while we were planning the campaign, I felt apprehensive about residents choosing to include their names and faces in the campaign. And it took me a long time to, to, to censor, decide that I shouldn't censor participants or take away the opportunity to own the campaign messaging. I think um, throughout this time, what I've found is that we're not the focus as researchers in the project in Glen Innes. It's the community that are positioned as the owners of the problem configuration and corresponding solutions. But at the same time, we can't remove ourselves from it, with the research being co-constructed and shared and shaped through our lens. Having spent more than a year on the project in Glen Innes, we feel driven by the need to accurately represent the participants' narratives, continue working in partnership with the advisory board, and give back to the Glen Innes community. Thank you. Uh, and our next CCA project is a project in Fielding, Manawatu, which involved 30 Māori participants, mostly from the local iwi, and constituted from the margins of the margins. <clears throat> in my presentation in Ethnicity and Race and Communication Division, I outlined the method of identif identifying and engaging with whānau participants from the margins of the margins in that video. In-depth interviews were conducted with these participants who articulated their meanings of health and well-being from their lived experiences of entrenched systemic health inequalities. They called into question health strategies designed for them rather than with them. They sojourned outside of hegemonic health care discourse and articulated possibilities for a health care system that is centred on land, the environment and clean waterways. These served as anchors to the reimaginings of a health care system, services and communication grounded in their voices. In the ICA Health Communication Panel, New Frontiers of the CCA Approach, the Indigenous Resistance presentation by myself and Professor John Etzel, we outlined two CCA campaigns conducted here uh, in Aotearoa. In the second half of that presentation, I outlined this What We Say Matters campaign, uh, which grew out of the CCA project here in Fielding with our advisory group and is discussed in more detail in that presentation. Our third CCA campaign in Aotearoa is a campaign in Highbury, Palmerston North. 
It is a CCA academic community partnership, which began in Highbury in 2018. <coughs> Excuse me. In-depth interviews were conducted with around 60 participants, gleaning their thoughts and experiences about poverty in the community. Dr. Terry Tetau of the uh, Rangitane and Ngāti Kahungu Nations in the Wairarapa was an integral part of the project. She has now left the university to continue pursuing her art career. Like the other CCA projects, a hybrid community advisory group was formed. Now two members of the group work for CARE and are continuing with the campaigns. With predominantly Māori, Pacifica, immigrant and refugee populations, Highbury is in many ways constitutes the margins of Palmerston North, emergent in discourse as a space to be avoided. For many participants, disrupting the stigmas around the community formed the basis for their emerging voices that Highbury is a safe zone for those who live there. This culminated in the I Choose Highbury campaign, comprising a photo voice exhibition and video campaigns, which will be uploaded to the I Choose Highbury Facebook page. Gail Moana Johnson is a key community researcher from the Highbury Advisory Group, together with Jasmine Pye, uh, who is also from the group, and is engaged in design and social media for CARE. Both staff began work at CARE after the ICA deadlines. The CCA campaigns reflect a sense of pride in the community, ties in Highbury. Across the sites of fieldwork in Aotearoa, New Zealand, the CCA has made significant strides addressing issues in ways that co-create infrastructures for marginalised communities to raise their voices and decentre expert domination on communities. Constructing dialogic spaces where people at the margins can participate, raise their issues and give solutions, and locally meaningful ways to put forth theories of health and wellbeing. The CCA encompasses ways of examining the governing knowledge structures, striving to invert the practices of dominant narratives by involving those at the margins, attending to the challenges of the communities with voice, equality, health and accessibility. To watch some of the campaign videos on Facebook, please search out Poverty is Not Our Future for Glen Innes, What We Say Matters for Fielding and for Highbury, I Choose Highbury. Here's technical producer Richard Tories co-created videos with our advisory groups. Uh, Richard, who is typically behind the camera, and right now he's in the background. Uh, thank you for your production expertise and guidance. We are happy to respond to any questions as we see them. Thank you all for watching.